Suddenly, there was a great earthquake, for an angel of the Lord came down from heaven, rolled aside the stone, and sat on it. He said, Don't be afraid. I know you are looking for Jesus, who is crucified. He isn't here. He's risen from the dead, just as he said would happen. The conqueror, victorious king and lord over every living thing. They tried to reject him, but he couldn't be ignored. They tried to take him out, but he couldn't be defeated. They said he was dead, but they didn't know the ending. Mighty Savior, he reigns forever. Jesus is alive. Come on, church. Happy Easter. Why don't you guys stand to your feet? Come on, we're going to worship this morning. I was buried beneath my shame. Hey. Who could carry that kind of weight? It was my tomb till I met you. Yeah. I was breathing but not alive. All my failures I tried. To hide, it was my truth till I met you. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave, hey. out of the darkness into your glorious day. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Hey. Come on, who's excited to be in the Lord's house on this resurrection day? Woo! Now your mercy has saved my soul. Now your freedom is all that I know. The old made new. Jesus, when I met you, when you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness. Into your glorious day, you called my name, and I ran out of that grave, out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Come on, let's declare this out together this morning. The resurrection of Jesus is for us. We were dead, but now we can be alive in him. Come on, sing this out. I needed rescue, my sin was heavy. The chains break at the weight of your glory. I needed shelter, I was an orphan. Now you call me a citizen of heaven. When I was broken, you were my healing. Now your love is the air that I'm breathing. I have a future, my eyes are open. For when you call my name, shout it out, church. I ran out of that grave. Out of the darkness, into your glorious day. Hey. You called my name, and I ran out of that grave. Out of the 
darkness into your glorious day. Come on, church. Come on, let's give Jesus some praise in the house this morning. Say hallelujah. Oh, we're just getting started, church. Come on. I searched the world. But it couldn't fill me. Man's empty praise, treasures to fade are never enough. And you came along and put me back together. And every desire. Is now satisfied here in your love. Hey. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. I'm not afraid to show you my weakness, my failures and flaws, Lord, you've seen them all, and you still call me friend, cause the God of the mountain yes, he is. is the God of the valley. There's not a place your mercy and grace won't find me again. Come on, declare it out this morning. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing better than you. Oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Better than you, Lord, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you. Come on, we're going to get a little bit loud this morning. All right. You turn morning from dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn mourning to dancing. You give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. To gardens, you turn bones into armies, you turn seas into highways, you're the only one who can, the only one who can, you're the only one. There's nothing. Come on, tell them, church. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Better than you, oh, there's nothing. Nothing is better than you.
You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into gardens. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways, you're the only one who can, you're the only one who can, you're the only one who can. can. Come on, let's give Jesus a shout of praise. Come on, I say give Jesus some praise. I don't want to stop y'all let's get it get it going again come on yeah we're gonna sing you turn morning into dancing because it's Easter he's alive he was dead but now he's alive come on come on let's see you clap you give beauty for ashes. You turn shame into glory. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into goddess. You turn bones into armies. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who can. You turn graves into goddess. Bum, 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 bum. You turn bones into army. You turn seas into highways. You're the only one who Come on, if he's turned a grave into a garden in your life, let him know how thankful you are this morning. Come on, let him know. You guys can take a seat. Come on. Hey, happy Easter, church family. My name's Pastor Michael. It's an honor and a privilege to have you worshiping with us today, whether that's in the room or those joining us online. I want you to know right out of the gate that you are loved and that your life has value. The resurrection of Jesus that we're celebrating today is a resurrection that he made possible for you as well. And so my prayer in my heart is this, that if you have not yet submitted your life to Jesus, today would be the day of your salvation where you come back to life through Jesus Christ, overcoming death, hell, and the grave in your own personal journey. And so I'm excited as we continue to worship together this morning, as we open God's word, I want to ask you right now to open your heart to receive all that Jesus has for you today. I want to thank you guys for being such a generous church. If you're a first-time guest, it's your first time here, please feel no obligation to give. Here at our church, we practice the tithe. We believe that God challenges us in his word to give our first fruits, our first 10% back to God. And so if you want to sow a seed into the ministry here, into what God is doing in our church, I want to invite you to do that this morning. There's a giving envelope in the seat back in front of you. You can give by cash or check this morning, or you can head over to 7 am Church dot com slash giving to make a one-time gift or set up your recurring tithe on there as well. We've got seven youth that gathers every Wednesday night for 6th through 12th grade students. It's an amazing time. Doors open at 6.30 p.m. Service starts at 7 o'clock. Last Wednesday night, we had 17 of our youth give their life to Jesus. And so I'm believing that this is just the beginning of the revival we're going to continue to see, not just here on Sundays, not just on Wednesday nights, but in this region across every church across this entire nation as we desperately need to get back to the root and the foundation of what our country was founded on, and that was founded under 
God. And so I want to invite you, if you've got a 6th through 12th grade student at home, or maybe they're with you today, or maybe, hey, you're one of those students in the room, if you don't already join us, please join us Wednesday night for 7 Youth Doors Open at 6.30 p.m. Today, right after service today, we are doing a massive Easter egg hunt at noon. We've got our 9 service, we've got our 10.30 service, and then at noon, we're going to do a massive Easter egg hunt around our property from 0 to 11 years old. And so here's the one thing we're asking. We're asking that your kiddos are participants in our 7 a.m. kids service happening downstairs right now in order to participate. They've got the Bible Easter story on their level for them to learn all about. They're also going to be decorating the bags that they'll get to use for the Easter egg hunt. And so we're asking that they go downstairs and be a part of that service. Obviously, if it's a baby or a little one, you want to hold them today. That's totally fine as well. Just make sure you stop by the nursery at some point and get a sticker for them to be able to participate. I want to thank you guys for joining us today. We've got an amazing service planned as we continue to worship together this morning. But for now, let's greet the people around us. Why don't you guys stand to your feet, hug your neighbor if you love them, high five them if you don't. We're going to continue to worship together on this Easter Sunday. Jesus is risen. Come on, let's stand in fellowship for a few moments this morning. All right, church, we're going to go back into a time of worship this morning. Jesus, 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 Jesus. Mm. Oh, we worship you, God. There was a moment when the lights went out. When death had claimed its victory The king of love had given up his life The darkest day in history There on a cross they hate for sinners For every curse his blood atoned One final breath and it was finished But not the end we could have known For the earth began to shake And the veil was torn What sacrifice was made As the heavens rose
When all was lost, he crossed eternity. The King of life was on the moon. For in a dark, cold tomb, where our Lord was laid, one miraculous we're forever changed. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail the Lord of heaven and earth. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, Let's just declare that again and again this morning. When the rest of our nation and country wants to bow to other things, let us make the declaration today that Jesus is King. Come on, lift it up with your own voice in the house this morning. Oh, we worship you, God. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, you alone are worthy. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, hail King Jesus. Jesus. Oh, we worship you, God. We hail you, King. Because you alone are worthy of our prayer. Oh, hail King Jesus. Oh, Christ. 
Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back to life. I won't forget the moment I heard you call my name Out of the grip of darkness Into the light of grace And just like Lazarus Oh, you brought me back to life Where there was dead religion Now there is living faith all of my hope and freedom are found in Jesus' name. And just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back to life. Something says I am guilty, I point to the price you paid. When something says I'm not worthy, I point to that empty grave, and just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life. I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free, the hope of heaven before me. The grave behind, hallelujah, you brought me back to life. How can I begin to thank you for all that you've done for me? Jesus, to fully praise you, it will take all eternity. Just like Lazarus, oh, you brought me back to life. You brought me back to life. You brought me back to life. You brought me back. in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind. Hallelujah, you brought me back to life. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been again my heart is free the hope of heaven before me the grave behind hallelujah you brought me back to life for the bible says that while we were still yet sinners christ died for us and through baptism we're buried with him in death but we are raised to the newness of life in him come on let's declare this together this morning church the devil thought he had you haha <laughs> but jesus said you are his the enemy yeah. thought he had me but jesus said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but jesus said you are mine the enemy thought he had you but jesus said you are his 
the enemy thought he had me but Jesus you said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but Jesus you said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but Jesus you said you are mine the enemy thought he had me but Jesus you said you are mine the enemy thought he had me, but Jesus, you said you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus, you said you are mine. The enemy thought he had me, but Jesus, you said you are mine. No longer I who live, but Christ in me, for I've been born again. My heart is free, the hope of heaven before me, the grave behind, hallelujah, you brought me back to life. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Come on, you can do a little bit better than that, church. Come on, give Jesus some praise. Jesus is nailed to a cross. Agony, shame, sacrifice, love. The sinless Lamb of God is bearing the sin of the world. The sky turns dark and the earth shakes. Father, into your hands I commit my spirit. His head drops to his chest and Jesus breathes his final breath. His body is laid in a borrowed tomb with a boulder and Roman centurions guarding it. But after three days, the angel rolls the stone away and the guards fall to the ground like dead men. And the same Jesus who was crucified, dead, and buried just days before is doing exactly what he promised. Jesus is walking out of the tomb, alive. Today we celebrate Jesus as the risen King of Kings and the living Lord of Lords. We proclaim him as the victorious one who has conquered sin and death. He is before all things and in him all things hold together. All glory, all power, all majesty, all dominion are his and his alone. And today we declare together with Christ followers around the world that the resurrection of Jesus Christ changes everything. Mark chapter 16, verse 1. When the Sabbath was passed, Mary Magdalene, Mary the mother of James, and Salome brought spices, so they may go and anoint Jesus' body. And very early on the first day of the week when the sun had risen, they went to the tomb. And they were saying to one another on their way, Who will roll the stone away for us at the entrance of the tomb? And when they got there, they looked up and they saw that the stone had been rolled back. After entering the tomb, they saw a young man sitting on the right side, dressed in a white robe, and they were alarmed. But he said to them, do not be alarmed. You seek Jesus of Nazareth who was crucified. He has risen. He is not here. Come on, church. Do you believe that this morning? Jesus has risen. Jesus is alive. Happy Easter Sunday. I'm so glad you joined us today. I know we've got a packed room. We had to pull out extra chairs. Come on, somebody. Praise Jesus for that. I know we've got people joining us online all around the world. And really, it's not about our church. It's not about my message. It's not about me. It is about the reality and the truth that churches all around the world are celebrating together on this Resurrection Day, rejoicing because Jesus did exactly what he said he was going to do. 
Because on Good Friday, oh, when he hung on that cross, it was as if every word he had spoken was a lie. It was as if the disciples were the biggest fools for believing him and choosing to give up three years of their life to do ministry with him. It was as if hell won. And y'all, I just got to think and ponder for a moment the party that the devil must have been throwing on Saturday. But oh, devil, don't you count your chickens before they hatch. Because hell celebrated too early because Sunday was And when Jesus walked out of that tomb, eternity was changed forever. Every word he had spoken is now valid. Every word that has been penned in this book holds true. All because Jesus is alive. And I want to tell you something today. You can walk the streets. You can step in the tomb. And guess what, church? The tomb is still empty today. The resurrection of Jesus holds true. And I want to tell you this morning, because I know there might be some in a room this size. that's like, I don't know if I believe that. That's just a Bible story. No, the resurrection of Jesus is not just a biblical story. It's actually a historical fact. Billy Graham stated, there is more evidence that Jesus rose from the dead than there is that Julius Caesar ever lived Or that Alexander the Great died at the age of 33. Let me put it this way. There is more proof that our God died on Friday, was placed in a tomb and came out walking three days later. Then there is proof of about 50% of the history books we put in our public schools. The resurrection of Jesus was a historical event. Around the world, one man with 12 disciples. And we are still talking about it today. But what does the resurrection mean for me? What does it mean for you that some 2,000 years ago a man named Jesus walked out of the empty grave? Well, I'm so glad you asked. Thanks for participating this morning. I believe there's three things the resurrection of Jesus can teach us on this Easter Sunday. The first is this. Because of the resurrection church, we can receive salvation. You see, salvation, what is salvation? It is the free gift of God. It is being saved by God from our sin and the consequences that come with it. Y'all want the bad news or the good news first? I'll tell you the bad news. I was going to tell you anyways. I just thought I'd include you. Here's the bad news. We all fall short. We all sin. And the consequence of that sin is But here's the good news. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, death is not the end. Because of the resurrection of Jesus Christ, sin has lost its power. Hell has lost its grip. But because of the resurrection of Jesus, we can receive salvation. The Bible says, if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and he was raised on the third day, you shall be saved. You shall receive salvation. 1 Corinthians 1.18 says this, For the message of the cross is foolishness to those who are perishing, but to us who are being saved, it is the power of God. You see, the cross, a symbol for so long in human history that, that magnified death, where criminals were placed because they were guilty, is now the symbol of our victory over death, hell, and the grave. You see, salvation, what does that mean? Well, first, it means we're saved from sin and the judgment of sin. It happens because we're saved by Jesus' death and his resurrection, but we're saved into a relationship with Jesus Christ. And that's why I believe, church, we don't have to wait till the day we take our last breath to begin walking in the salvation that Jesus has planned for us today. And when we cry out to Jesus, when we repent of our sin and we confess that he is Lord, salvation happens immediately. You are saved. You are set free from the consequence for all of eternity. 
Now, does that mean you are perfect? <laughs> Anyone who's a follower of Jesus in the room this morning would say, absolutely not, Pastor. Well, how can it be that salvation happens immediately, and yet as Jesus followers, we still stumble, we still fall short, we still don't always have it all together? Well, because the second piece of the resurrection story goes like this. Because of the resurrection, we can experience transformation. You see, salvation is the step. It's the starting line. It is not the end goal for the follower of Jesus. I'm not interested in selling tickets to heaven, y'all. I'm interested in seeing lives changed by the power and the blood of Jesus that are transformed to then go transform this world. Because of the resurrection, we can experience transformation. You see, salvation happens immediately, but sometimes transformation will happen incrementally. And here's the good news. Because if you're not yet a follower of Jesus in the room this morning, you might say, well, pastor, I think I got to go break this addiction before I can come to Jesus. Pastor, I think I got to go clean up my marriage before I can come to Jesus. I think I got to go get my kids in order before I can come to Jesus. No, no, no. That's not how salvation works. Jesus says, come to me as you are and watch as I transform your life. Watch as I do the changing in your heart. Watch as I set you free from that addiction. Watch as I give you the power to overcome that temptation. Watch as I restore your marriage. Watch as I lead you to the foot of the cross. And as you're at the foot of the cross, your children are asking you why you're there. And you're leading your children to salvation. Oh, transformation. Do not conform to the patterns of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. It is evident right now that we need a church. We need a body who is willing to stand boldly and proclaim, I will not conform to the pattern of this world, but I will stand in Jesus' truth, and I will be transformed by the power of the blood of the Lamb. You see, around Christian circles in the church, we use this phrase being born again when you give your life to Jesus. Because yes, when you are born as a human, you are born into water, but this relationship begins and you are now born of his spirit. And the transforming work of Jesus Christ can begin in your life. And I'm telling you, for some, it's going to take time. For others, it's immediate. And that's why I love our Savior, Jesus, because he's not a respecter of persons. But we all have a unique testimony. We all have a story of transformation. And I'm here to tell you, if Jesus has changed your life, there is somebody on the face of this earth right now who needs to hear your story, who needs to hear your testimony, who needs to hear how he turned your grave into a God. Garden, how you were dead and now you're alive. Jesus is alive. Salvation happens immediately. Transformation may happen incrementally and here's why. Because the more your belief changes, the more your behavior will change. Like I'm telling y'all, you don't have to understand this book cover to cover in order to say, I'm a sinner and I need Jesus. But from that moment forward, as you spend time with your loving Savior, guess what he does? He reveals himself to you. He reveals his character through his word. He reveals his nature through his spirit. And as you spend time with him and you get to know him, he's going to transform your beliefs and your behavior changes will follow. Let me put it this way. You can come to Jesus as as an addict, but he doesn't want you to stay one. Because the more time you spend with him, you'll start to realize that he is the provider of your hope. He is the provider of your peace. He is that source of rest that you're looking for when you hit that, when you drink that, when you smoke that, when you snort that. He becomes the solution to everything you are searching for. And guess what? the addiction starts to fade away. That temptation that has overtaken you. Oh, when you spend time with Jesus and you begin to learn that what breaks the heart of God is the very things you're participating in, they will begin to break your heart. And as your sin breaks your own heart, guess what? It becomes less attractive. And then you stop participating in those 
things. You see, salvation and transformation is not just about Jesus saving us from our sin. It's also about Jesus leading us to victory over our sin. Come to Jesus as you are and watch as he gives you the power to break the chains that are holding you. Praise God. We don't have to do that work on our own. Praise God, we don't have to get cleaned up to come to him. Because I'm telling y'all, I'd still be drunker than a skunk in a ditch somewhere if I had to get clean before I came to Jesus. But the power of Jesus said, Michael, come to me and watch as I transform your life. And because of the resurrection, that same power is available to every single one of us today. Jesus wants you to live a free life. He doesn't want you to live in chains. Jesus wants you to live a full life. He doesn't want you to live depressed. He doesn't want you to live defeated. He doesn't want you to live just one day at a time, just hoping you can get by. No, Jesus said, I have come to give you life and life more abundant. And let me tell you something, the life that Jesus provides is much bigger than the American dream has promised. Because of the resurrection, we can receive salvation. Because of the resurrection, we can experience transformation. And it's only when we allow these two things to be true that this third point is also true. Because of the resurrection, we can live in celebration. I go on to say it. I don't know when Christians became the most cynical, hateful, senile people on this planet. We should be the most joy-filled. We should be the most energetic. We should be the most passionate, excited people to live on this earth. Because no matter what our president says, no matter what's happening around the world, we know that Jesus is still king on the throne. No matter what that doctor report says, y'all, we know Jesus is alive. No matter what they said about you when they walked out, Jesus is alive. You see, as followers of Jesus, we don't let our circumstances dictate our praise, but we let our faith in Jesus bring our praise above our circumstances. Why? So when we're rejoicing in the face of the enemy, people are looking at us going, what the heck is wrong with you? I thought your life sucked. Yes, it does, but my God don't. Come on. Jesus is alive. And I'm just saying, yo, I love to have fun. And if we can't get loud in church for Jesus, we're going to have a real hard time getting loud for Jesus out there. So let's turn it up. Come on, let's take a praise break on this Easter Sunday. Come on, I said Jesus is alive. Does anyone believe that in the house today? I said he's defeated death. He's defeated hell. He's defeated the grave. He's defeated cancer. He's defeated depression. He's defeated anxiety. He's bringing restoration. He's bringing hope. He's bringing you a future. Oh, we worship you. Yeah. Woo. Oh, death, where is your sting? Oh, hell, where is your victory? <laughs> but thanks be to God. He gives us the victory through our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. The resurrection of Jesus changes everything. One thing I know to be true is this. You can exist but not be fully alive. Throughout the Gospel of John, Jesus makes seven declarative I am statements. And in those statements, he declares, I am the resurrection and the life. Here's what I know to be true. You can't have life outside of Christ. You can exist. You can wake up. You can live your day. Breathe in, breathe out. The mundane, same thing over Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday. But you're not fully alive. It's only when you receive Jesus as Lord of your life. When you receive his salvation, when you experience his transformation, where you begin to experience what it means to truly live. I can tell you this because that's my story. I existed. 
I thought the world was offering everything that led to pleasure, joy, and happiness, but can I tell you something? It left me empty, depressed, and broken. And it was in a moment where I tried to take my own life, where I realized and had an encounter with the one true living God, and Jesus saved my life and showed me what it meant to be fully alive. And I'm here to tell you today, if you're trying to get through this life without Jesus, you may ask, man, I don't know why I'm going through what I'm going through. I don't know why I don't have joy. I don't know why I'm not happy about this. It's because you have not yet first experienced what true life is. And because of the resurrection, I want you to know this morning that true life is available to you. Like I'm just saying, y'all, Jesus walked out of the grave so you could walk into a new life. You could walk into a full life. You could walk into his blessings. You could walk into his abundance. Now, I'm not going to promise you that it's a life full of rainbows and unicorns because uh, ask me about my life. It's not. But I can tell you this. It gives me a hope and a peace that surpasses all understanding to know that no matter what happens, I can rejoice in the name that is above every other name because Jesus is alive. Being fully alive means to be in Christ. Colossians 2.13, you were dead because of your sins and because of your sinful nature, which was not yet cut away, but then God made you alive in Jesus Christ when he forgave all your sins. To be in Christ is what it means to be fully alive, but we must also recognize and realize that there are some things that have to die in order to be made fully alive. You see, Jesus took death upon himself. He took our sin and the consequences that come with it, but he also challenges us in his word that we are to take up our own cross, to die to ourself so he can fully live in us. Let me put it this way, church. There is a kind of life that will lead to death, but there is a kind of death that will lead to life. And when you choose to realize that there's some things that have to die in order to be made alive, only then do you truly experience what true life is. To die to our selfishness, to let our pride die, to let our sinful decisions die, to let our fear die. And when we realize that that tomb is still empty, so what does that mean? You can place whatever needs to die in that tomb and walk out of it in the hands of Jesus today. True living is only found when you find Jesus Christ. And here's the great news. Even if you weren't looking for him, your Father in heaven's been chasing you down. I don't believe you're here today by accident. We have a lot of new faces. I haven't even got to meet some of you beautiful people. The ugly ones, just I won't talk to you. <laughs> and so I don't know. Maybe you saw an ad on Facebook. Maybe a friend invited you. Maybe you're a family. Maybe you're in town visiting family. But I believe this to be true. Our God is not a God of coincidences. He's a God of purpose. He's a God of alignment. And he's a God of assignment. And you're in this room today because he wanted you to be reminded of his love for you. That the Easter celebration that comes is only because God loved you so much that he sent his one and only son Jesus to die for you. Like just let that sink in for a moment. God, the creator of heaven and earth, loved you so much that he sacrificed his one and only son. So he could call you daughter. So he could call you son. But I'm telling you that love has been displayed for us. But he's a gentleman and he's not a respecter of persons. And so what do I mean when I say that? The invitation is open, but we must receive it. We must respond. We must act and call out to Jesus and repent of our sin confess that he is Lord in order to receive that first step of salvation. And then it gets good, church, because the transforming work begins, and then you'll realize that you can live in celebration every single minute of your life, no matter what, because you have the hope that can only be found in Jesus. The Bible says in Romans 6, 4, we were therefore buried with him through baptism into death, 
in order that just as Christ was raised from the dead through the glory of the Father, we too may find new life. So on this Easter Sunday, I want to close in prayer. I want to ask you this morning, if you've received this gift of new life, I'm going to ask all of us to just close our eyes and bow our heads for a moment. I like to put it this way. If today was your last day, would you know where you would spend eternity? Do you have the assurance of the gift of salvation to know that you would hear the words, well done, good and faithful servant? Or would you say, Pastor, I, I'll be honest, I don't know. Well, I'm here to tell you today, you can walk out of this place knowing that whether it's when you take your last breath or when Jesus returns, you will be ready to be welcomed home. I told you the Bible says if you believe in your heart and confess with your mouth that Jesus is Lord and he was raised on the third day, you shall be saved. And I believe on this resurrection Sunday, it's a day of salvation for some in this room and online. That you would realize you need the hope of Jesus because the news channel ain't giving it to you. Your Twitter feed ain't giving it to you. That Facebook post ain't giving it to you. You need the hope that surpasses all understanding today that can only be found in Jesus' name. Or maybe it's an addiction that you're battling and you realize you're never going to overcome it on your own, but you want victory over it. And you'll realize today that through Jesus' power, through the blood of the lamb, he can give you the strength to overcome whatever it is you're facing. Maybe you would say this morning that you're depressed or that anxiety has a grip on you because you're fearful of tomorrow. You're fearful of today. I'm here to tell you that Jesus wants to give you victory over that depression and anxiety through the power of his Holy Spirit as he transforms you. The offer's been extended. The invitation is wide open. The tomb is empty. The question is, are you ready to receive it this morning? So I want to do something this morning I don't do often. But I believe that a physical response is in alignment with our supernatural heart. And so with every eye closed, every head bowed, I want to ask boldly one question. If you would say you want today to be the day of your salvation, to call upon the name of Jesus, maybe for the first time, or you would say, man, I ain't been to church in a long time. I need to realign my life with Jesus' will for my life. If that's you today, with every eye closed, every head bowed, I just want to ask you to slip your hand in the air right now. To just declare right now that Jesus is Lord. Amen. Come on, amen. There's hands popping up all around this room. I know there's hands going up where people are listening online. Amen. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Thank you, Jesus. Here's what I want to do. I, I'm not going to ask you to come forward, but as followers of Jesus, I know this to be true that I need to go to the Lord in repentance every single day. So I'm going to ask those of us in the room who are followers of Jesus to join those who raise their hand today in this prayer of repentance as we come to Jesus and we receive his salvation. Church, would you pray with me this morning? Jesus, I declare today, on this resurrection day, that you are alive that you are Lord of my life. I repent of my sin. I ask for your forgiveness. And I receive your salvation. Thank you, Jesus, for dying for me and coming back to life three days later. Today, I declare that you are Lord of my life for all of my life, over every area of my life. Make me 
to be transformed into your image. Give me the joy to live in celebration, to rejoice in the face of the enemy because death has been defeated, because hell has lost its keys, and in Jesus' name, I have the victory. Come on, all of God's people said amen, amen, and amen. If you believe Jesus is alive, stand with me. Shout a little bit this morning. Thank him for salvations that happened in this room online. We believe that God is who he said he is because he showed us with the empty tomb. Woo! Come on, somebody. Now, I told y'all I like to have fun. I like to have fun. I know there were, there were hands all over the room. And uh, I, I want to say one thing. If you don't have a church home, maybe you're worshiping with us for the first time. I want to invite you to continue to join us. Because one thing I've learned in my walk with Jesus is he puts people into your life to help you get through the things that you're going through. You see, our God Father is three in one, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. And even he needed a community. And I'm telling y'all, we were made in his image and we were designed for community. And so I value the church. I love the church. Why? Because Jesus died for the church. Like, I, I, I'm just going to be honest. As a pastor, it breaks my heart when I see people get on the Facebook and they post about how hurtful and hateful the church has been. I, I know there's this fad right now called church hurt, but let me tell you something. Nobody goes to the shopping mall, gets made fun of and calls it mall hurt and never goes back. No, nobody goes to school, calls it school hurt, and then never goes back. Nobody goes to work, calls it work hurt, and then no, never goes back. No, it's called people hurt. Why? Because we're all sinners. We all fall short, and the church is a hospital for the broken where we come together and say, I know I'm not perfect, but I serve a perfect Savior. And so on behalf of the bride of Jesus, I want you to hear my heart. I'm sorry if somebody misrepresented Jesus to you, but it was never Jesus. Jesus died for you. He loves you. He died for his church. And so I want to encourage you to get plugged in in this season to a church. Even if this isn't the house for you, there's so many great churches in this area. And if you don't live here, let me know. I'd love to find you a church where you live. The second thing is this. I love to party. <laughs> and so we're going to take a few minutes. I got to make sure they got the eggs ready outside. If you've got your kiddos downstairs, I'm going to invite you go get them. And uh, we're going to start what I'm calling organized chaos. <laughs> all right. That's all it is. All right. It's like herding sheep or cats or no, we don't herd demons. All right. Um, Y'all know what it, it says. All dogs go to heaven, all cats go to hell. Like, just saying? All right, so go get your kids uh, and uh, let's hang out, let's fellowship, let's be the church. But before we do that, we got to end with our declaration, all right? We got to show some of these people how we end every Sunday because we know, we know that church isn't just what takes place in here, but we are the church. So let's end it right on this Easter Sunday. Come on, y'all. God, we love you. Jesus, we thank you. Jesus, we thank you. Holy, Spirit, we Holy Spirit, we invite you to help us go be the church. Service is over. Church is not. Jesus is alive.